Hello everyone, welcome to the second in the series um, of how the making of the quizzes for the 390 fact that I'm going to hold my daughters to, but they're great kids. Um, and what I'm going to go through here at this point is the making of at least basic framework and uh, post it out as a kind of an instructional thing, uh, both for them and uh, for me and for others perhaps as we get into the concept that the medium is the message. Uh, medium and the message, the medium is the method, message is partly based on John Resig and Khan Academy's next bit of work which is so much cooler than the quizzes, um, that being the uh, computer science stuff, but I've got a lot of time into this and I think there is a certain mix of strategies for both learning and assessment we need to do with our kids or our students if you're a teacher. The reverse engineering on this is inspired also by Udacity and Coursera's uh, quizzing framework, which they tie in every three minutes or so into their presentation videos. So there's a lot into this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain as I'm going through the process and how it's going to work. You notice here I'm recording a whole lot of the screen. The reason I'm doing that um, and just working in this basic framework here is this basically is okay that's 640 by 480 do that edit undo here edit undo edit undo edit undo I'm using and you I'm using smooth draw which is an open source freely downloaded program you can use anything you want but the reason I'm going to be using smooth draw now I'm going to move this over so I realize I got to kind of do a little better job here. So I have the set of tools over here that comes to layering. Now if you don't understand layering, hopefully you will a little bit by the end of this video here. The layering we're going to be using so we can keep track of providing hints in this basic framework. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building Khan Academy framework exercises that can be posted to the web so, uh, or just run on your own computer, your kid's computer, so you can kind of keep track of how they're doing on questions that you want to use. My anticip the anticipation I have is that eventually this stuff will be crowdsourced and juried by Khan Academy or someone else, um, your school district, your set of parents, um, set of homeschoolers, so that we all don't have to build the same quizzes for this base knowledge. Um, I'm going about it for the most part leaving the math alone, but I did end up with this concept of um, some of the important math concepts that are often missed in the Common Core, and those will come up in a little bit here. So we'll talk about layering here. So I'm going to immediately, I'm going to add a new layer, and I, you could go ahead and change that property of that layer. I'm going to just call it, for this point, question, Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N. Okay, now it's it, what you'll see sooner or later is that um, it's a great idea to learn how to name your layers correctly. So the question here is going to be up here in this area, up here, and I'm not going to put a number here, but so um, here might be an example, um, which and what is which symbol? is useful for calculating doubling growth. Calculating doubling growth. Now what you'll notice here as I'm doing this is I'm leaving a little bit of an area which is probably going to be wrong up here and that's because of the way the interface at Khan Academy I think is set up that it takes up a, this bit of the square. So poorly written you could have typed it but you've got that laid out in the question. Later on you're going to see you're probably going to want to have a sound file that is attached to each one of these layers but that is done through a separate open source program something like Audacity not Udacity. And now I can go to add a new layer and once again we can take and change the name of that layer to answer form or something like that.
and you notice there's a lot of other stuff you can do in programs but now we've got the concept of we question and answer form and what I'm gonna do here because I'm gonna build up a whole series so I can make some tracks here I'm gonna actually have the answer form not be so standard but I'm gonna really try to sketch up a clock here and you're gonna see why in a second so I'm gonna kinda go do my best my level best which isn't very good when it comes to drawing circles and I guess that's fine. And I'm going to now tick this up into 12 answers plus 1 in the middle, which is not my typical format. So I'm going to do that by dividing this in half and dividing it in thirds, which is not so good. And later on, you're going to see why I typically want to get 24 points on the star. And these are going to be our answers. And I'm going to go through now. <laughs> the symbols that my daughter is using. And we're going to basically, at this point, I'm just going to put the circle answers here. So if I want them to get it right, select that one, or that one, or that one. And if you notice, I'm starting from a spot there, which isn't necessarily that logical. I could have started here and gone this way. I'm sorry, I could have gone this way. Could have gone this way. But I'm just filling these things in to spots. for the selection of the answer. The reason I'm doing this, and this is not so laid out, is I'm now going to be able to build a whole set of potential uh, quizzes which are going to be have the answer that's going to be one of these 13 things that I teach my kids in a group. And so the things I know and they know by rote, and I'm going to do this because I don't want to screw up so badly, I'm going to go ahead right now and edit cut and then edit paste and I'm going to move that up a little bit okay so now that's not bad because I'm going to have a little bit more space here to put my stuff and I'm going up you're not seeing me I'm going up to the pen there alright so what are my symbols or concepts that I'm going to use well E I Pi minus one, zero, one, square root of two, Pythagorean's number, square root of three, square root of five, phi, oh, okay, a matrix, lots of different ways to write a matrix, or a vector. Lots of different ways to write a vector. And in the end, I'm going to put this zero there, and I'm going to put infinity underneath it. So we now have that all on the answer form. So we have a question and then an answer form. And then eventually, we can then start to very easily begin another layer. And we could say hint one, hint two, hint three, hint four, and we'll just do one example here. So which symbol is useful for calculating doubling growth? And I'm going to once again change the layer. And we're just going to add one hint here, hint one. I think I might do hint 01. Remember, no spaces. Typically, in anything that can be a data field, if you haven't developed that habit, I'll try to link something out here to explain why. Okay, normal. So the hint here, oh, in this case, I might actually, if I'm, what I'm doing now is I've got different layers. So if you notice here, I can turn that off and turn that off. Later on, also, we'll be able to export these in different PNG files. All right, so what we have is some answer areas right there. And if I had put this circle in correctly, I could actually have it automatically calculate where these answer things are. However, Udacity and Coursera, especially Udacity, thinks there's more value in the handwritten quiz than there is in the stuff that's more typed. Uh, they obviously haven't seen my writing. All right, so that case, we're going to do a hint one. In this case, I can actually change the color if I want. I'm going to do that in this case. Um, go to green, pick the green there. And I can say which simple is useful for doubling growth. And I'm going to go ahead on hint 01. I'm going to rate it someplace, perhaps over here, just to give the hint on the side. Um, Euler 
was a genius. And I'm going to do one more, add a new layer. I'm going to call it Hint 02. What I'm doing is clicking here. I'm laying this out into Hint 02. Now, if you're already saying too many steps, I would agree with you except for the fact that if you take the time to build the template up correctly, very quickly be able to change the questions just by changing the questions and maybe perhaps the answers. So um, bear with me. The Hint 02 should have been the Hint 01, but I'm going to now, once again, on a different layer, I can use the same color or I can pick a different color. I'll pick a reddish one there. Close. You really want to think how these colors lay out. Uh, Hint 02 will be which symbol is useful for calculating growth. And you could say something, and what I would say on your first hint is give nothing away. Which symbol is useful for, well, not princes. So, so maybe prince, not princes symbol. And in the end, I'd have to know what prince's symbol is. I think he's changed prince as symbol. All right, so that we now have this thing laid out. So in fact, you have a number of PNGs which can now be broadcast and saved out. So the last thing you're going to need to do is to actually identify, and I can do that on another layer, and this is in a separate file, identify, add new layer, and then I'm going to once again change the layer name here to target points. Now, believe it or not, this even this could be automated in that if I go with a one pixel target or a very particular color, let's say, I don't know, yellow. It's not, I'm going to pick that there. And that's got a, you know, a, a mixing of red, green, blue. Right. If I do that, and I now put a single pixel here, here, there might be a few pixels, here, 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 obviously, here here, here, and there. If I put a single pixel in each of these, and of course there, it's a relatively straightforward exercise to have a program go in and identify those points. I won't go through it here, but what you can instead do is I'm going to once again move this around a little bit here. If you notice right there, I would write up off on the side that my first value is at an X of 169 and a Y of 319. Remembering, of course, and I'm going to just kind of draw uh, this up here now on this over here, that that is 640 and this is 480 and this is the X coordinate. That's positive X and this is positive Y. As you lay these things out in a typical computer editor. So later on you can write software and it is written already to do the flip so this is dealing in pure Cartesian. So that's a lot but what you have now is the ability to take this later on and add additional layers not from there add different questions. So that this would be the concept of question one and I'll just add one more finally add and add a new layer and I'm going to once again rename that layer question 2 hit OK and then on question 2 I'm going to turn off question 1 or leave question 1 on for now I guess there's question but I'll leave it on until I get started. Question two, now I can say which symbol, and I'm just going to write on the top, edit, undo, 
because what I'd like to do is then also learn how to use that to suck up the color. And do it again. I'm on question two, the pen, which symbol and you might be freaking out now but basically I just wanted to get you started you turn off the question which symbol is used in the additive is used as the additive identity or in the, I mean, this isn't such a great question. So you can think about refining these, or have your students refine, which symbol is used as the additive identity symbol. And in fact, all numbers are symbols. So there you go. Now you have question one, question two, and of course the answer to the first one would be E. Let's see what question one was. All right. And this stuff starts to look very confusing, though in the end you probably aren't going to necessarily want to do your quizzes in groups like this, but I need to make production here. And I've just given you 20 minutes on a setup, but all I've got left to do now is identify, is to push these things out. I'm going to show you one push out. I'm going to take that question and I'm going to export the layer. And this is will come up and I'm going to stick that particular in a particular spot and go from there. We'll pick that up in the next video learning that you can use any program that has layering to make this possible. We're learning to put things on different layers, right? You know, so background layer there, which we're not going to use the question, the answer forum or form, right? Hint, but second hint or first hint, right? All that stuff. And then eventually sound, which goes along with these is going to at least give students a little better, richer, more connected experience to you, perhaps, than the stuff that very often rolls through uh, stuff that's purely coming from the publishers um, or coming from some sort of paid sources. Remember, this is open source as much as you can, though there are ways to cloak part of it behind a Moodle server or something else as you want to protect. The goal is that when the quality goes up, you get some control on the answers uh, and we have a great shared open source environment. This can be greatly improved. This is not the be all end all. The next step, of course, is to learn how to do pure, great Khan Academy exercises, but that requires more program that we're going to cover here. All right, that's a lot. I don't like to put that much up to YouTube. I can cut it out down later, but I'm gonna keep this at. We're gonna pick this up from there. So right away, I'm gonna file, save as, and I'm gonna stick this in the short course, in the SPAD course, and I'm gonna give this shortly as making of. And it's a, actually, when I do that, it's a, a document for SmoothDraw, which we then will push out to PNGs. Thanks for listening. We'll see how this loads.